We're going to carry out a ring circuit test. Firstly, of course, I need to isolate the distribution board before I take the cover off. Now, to carry out the isolation, we need a padlock, a sign, and a lock-off that's appropriate to the type of isolator we've got. Before I turn this off, I've already asked if it's okay to make sure that there's nobody around that's going to be plunged into darkness or is going to cause anybody any discomfort. So I've got permission. I now turn it off, place my lock off in place, put the padlock in, lock it up, put the key in my pocket, and now it's safe to work. So the distribution board is isolated now. I've taken the lid off. I really need just to check that it is dead before I proceed with any work. So with again, with an approved voltage indicator, test between earth and line, earth and neutral, neutral and line. And as you can see, it's dead. Practice what I preach. I need to now reprove this on a proving unit. Absolutely safe. Just as one final check, it is dead. I've got all the cables disconnected now, so to carry out this test, I would need a low resistance ohm meter. So what I first need to do is turn it on and null these leads. These leads have got a resistance as well, which I don't really want to include in the test, so I need to zero the leads. Quite a simple process, depending on the type of instrument you've got. Join the leads together, we can see there's a resistance of 0.4 of an ohm. If I push the button, it goes to zero. And every test I take now will start from zero because the leads have been nulled. What I need to do is test each of these conductors end to end. So firstly, we do the line conductor. We've got a reading of 0.56. So now I'll test between the neutrals. It's important, of course, that you get a nice tight connection between the crocodile clips and the conductor. 0.55 is fine. All of these conductors are the same size, so they're all 2.5, and for that reason, they should all be very similar readings. Okay, again, 0.57, so that's perfect. What I need to do now is cross-connect the line and neutral conductors. Luckily for me, in this board, they've been identified. I know that the ones with the grey tape will go to one socket and the ones without the tape will go to another socket. So it's important, really, to get it round the right way, otherwise you're going to get inaccurate readings. So the marked one with an unmarked one, brown and blue. OK. Block connectors are probably the best way to carry out this test because you want to make sure you get a nice connection. Same with the other two ends. So now they're joined together, you can take the crocodile clips off. I don't need to worry about too large an exposed tip on this one because it's a dead test, so I've got no problems. I need to test now between the joined ends. And I should get somewhere about 2.8, I guess. And in fact, I've got 0.27. I should be getting half of the reading of one of those conductors. I now need to go to each socket outlet and carry out a test between the line and the neutral at each socket just to make sure that they are indeed on a ring and there's no interconnections or no cross connections. So having tested the first socket on the ring, I've tested all of the others. Doesn't matter which way round you go. So I'm now going to test the final one. Okay. And again, between line and neutral, I should be expecting a reading of 0.27 or thereabouts, which is what I'm getting here. So this reading is perfectly okay. I'm quite happy now that this is on a ring and the polarity is correct. So now I've completed the, the line and neutral test at each socket, I need to do the similar, the same test between the line and earth, again here and at each socket. So again, we join the opposite ends, so an unmarked cable with a marked cable here.
and you can see, as I said before, I'm using block connectors so that I get a nice tight connection. And now I can test between the joined ends. This isn't a necessary test, but it will give me an idea of what I'm expecting on each socket outlet when I go around. And again, now I've done this, I need to go to each socket, test between the line and earth, and this is the reading I should get between line and earth at each socket. Okay, so I've tested all the other sockets. This is the very last one. Hopefully this is gonna be consistent with all of the others. It's important you test all of the sockets, otherwise you may find that one of them has got a reverse polarity. Put the leads in, again I should get a reading of between 0.05 of the original reading of 0.27 we got. Now, I've got a reading of 0.29, which is perfect. So having completed all of the tests, obviously the next move is to take the block connectors off and make sure that I connect all the conductors back and leave the installation safe.